Okay, we are live. Guys, we are live on Wooji Band. We are. There we go. Just wait for a few people to join us. Welcome, welcome to everybody joining us right now. We are live on Frost Shock. Perfect, okay. Just wait for a couple more people to join us. Also, for those of you joining, I promise I'm more than just hands. Um, <laughs> we are doing education station today, which means that um, sort of a bird's eye view camera worked a little bit better than other camera angles, which is why you're pointing down at my wonderful board here. Um, hello. <laughs> Okay, right then, let's start. So, welcome, welcome. My name is Leah and I'm part of the Posh Talk and Would You Bend team. Um, today is a Wednesday, in case you didn't know. <laughs> and um, on Wednesdays, we like to do education stations. An education station is where we teach you and show you how you can use Posh Talk and Would You Bend products in crafting and upcycling projects. One of the most frequently asked questions we get is about our patina range. So we have two types of patina. We have oil-based patina and we have aqua patina. If you don't really know what patina is, I like to say it kind of adds a tarnish to your work. It's really good to add shadows, add depth. Um, you can really build with patina. It has... Um, different qualities and posture metallic paste and posture metallic pigments and I really want to show you those qualities today. So we're not going to be making like a fantastic piece of art, you're just going to be able to see how these work, what the texture's like, what you can do with them and hopefully get a bit inspired about what you could do with them. Um, yeah, have we got any comments Artemis? We have Maria saying hello from Crete. Hello Maria. Uh, she says it in Greek, so you have to say... Kalispera! <laughs> yes! That's absolutely great. And um, Donna saying good morning. Good morning, Donna! <laughs> okay, so in front of me right now, I have our oil-based patina range. So as you can see, we have six oil-based patinas. All these colours are kind of um, rusty, metallic colours. If you're looking for bright patina colours, you want our aqua patina range. I will show you as well. So here is our aqua patina range. Look at those stunning colours. So we've got purples, blues, greens, dark blues, all kinds of different colours versus the oil based range, which if I can fit them in my small hands, you can see they're quite rusty, metallic -y, gold, silvers, coppers, all that kind of good stuff, which is great for kind of rusting up projects, making them look distressed, old, vintage. Um, today I want to start with the oil-based patinas um, because I think this is something where people kind of get a bit intimidated by them. Um, I would compare them to oil paints in terms of workability. So when you first get them out of the tin, they've sort of got like almost a crayony texture straight out. So I'm just opening up the, get a good one for you, copper patina here. And I'm just gonna hold this up to the camera for you to see. So you can see it's got that beautiful metallic shine, classic posh chalk there. Um, but straight out of this, when I apply it onto the surface, you'll notice that it does have a crayony consistency. It will um, kind of, it's difficult to spread. It's really thick, which is great for kind of really rubby, grimy looking stuff, if, if that's the style that you're going for. Um, because it's oil based, you can't spread these with water. If you put water on this, it's, it's just going to sit on top of the oil, like what you would, you know, if, if you had a jug with some oil and water in. Um, so we actually use another type of oil. This is our Push Top Patina Extending Wax, which smells pretty good. <laughs> um, so this is what we use to make the oil-based patinas a lot more workable. So I'm just grabbing a brush now in front of me. I'm gonna grab this uh, kind of round brush for stippling, just so you can really see the texture of this patina. So I'm dipping in 
and normally, you know, if I'm using metallic paste, my favourite thing to do is have it come out and hold its shape on the end of the brush, whereas this, pushing it in really well, and it's not hanging off, it's really thick, pasty kind of material. So I'm going to go on, and I've got some Woody Bend stuck to this board here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this copper patina on the surface. Now I'm dragging this, I'm rolling my brush on this. Can I have you dipping in on of in the patina again, please? There we go. So what this is doing, it's sitting on the surface, it's giving a really, really high coverage. Um, and you see that gorgeous colour on there, but you can see it's really not spreadable. So you can get some really beautiful build up in certain areas. So if you want to create more shadow in the corner of your piece, if I wanted to create shadow here, just rub my patina on there and decide, actually, I want to build that shadow up a little bit more. I'm going to dip back in my patina, apply more and build and build and build. So just like that, I've achieved a really, really pretty shadow in the corner of this board. Now, what happens if you don't want such a high coverage thing? Maybe you've um, made a project and it's really bright and it's just not the kind of distress look that you're going for. What would you do? Well, you can apply your patina and then pan it because it looks too dark. Don't worry. When you add the patina extending wax, which I got here, I'm just going to rub my brush around in this can i have you yep. dipping in next to the pot next to that yep and go so i've got some wax on my brush here and as soon as i put this on my patina look at how far that's spreading now you see that so this sort of consistency this texture i can keep going with this i can take more wax on my brush add even more to the outside of where i've applied my patina and i'm going to get a really beautiful transition between the depth of these colors so the patina extending wax is really you know it's a useful tool if you're not wanting to have such a, a strong build up of colors in there so we've got this which is how it looks when it's applied directly onto a surface here this oil based one there versus how well it spreads when you've got some patina wax but you'd notice that it does lose a bit of its pigmentation and turns into more of a wash I'd describe it as um so again I'm just going to take a little bit more wax and on this area here I'm going to add it and just brush half of where I've applied it and what you're going to be able to see guys when I hold this up is how the patina extending wax has taken off some of this pigmentation and allowed it to spread over the molding, gives it a lesser coverage, but a completely different effect. So it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. So if I hold this up here, I've not rubbed it with my brush. Here, where it's a bit lighter, is where I've used my patina extending wax. Now with the patina range, the oil based ones, you can build colours up, you know, you can mix them, match them, do whatever you want with them. The only thing you can't do with the patinas is apply aqua patina to them because it's water, so it will separate. You guys, it's not gonna it's not gonna sit nicely on top of it. It's gonna be if you're if you like your makeup, you put the wrong primer on foundation, it splits, you think, oh my goodness, what's wrong with my face? It's not your face, it's the oil versus the water, which is the exact same thing with the patinas. So I've got my oil patina here in the copper colour that I've used. Now I'm going to actually go in with my Byzantine gold pigment, pigment, sorry, patina. <laughs> Too many you open that thing, I'm going to just take a look. Yeah, read some comments. Do we have any questions about patinas? Not yet, but we have a lot of good morning and hello. So we have Laurie saying good morning, Leah and Tram, which I mean, I think it's team. Um, 
Rebecca saying good morning ladies and Donna saying good morning from New Orleans. Good morning ladies, lovely to have you all here. We also have Sylvia saying hola desde España. Hola España, como esta Sylvia? We have Sna uh, Summer saying uh, good morning from Canada. We have Giovanna saying good day from Italy, Ravenna. Ciao Italia. And we have Harold saying good morning from Missouri, USA. Hello Harold. What's the weather like in the US today? I know yesterday it was a little bit rainy and miserable. Oh, you, we are not seeing. There you go. Oh, there you go. So I'm actually I'm going in with this Byzantine gold pigment here. Can you just do a spot for me? Yeah. And I'm brushing this over my widgey bend that's been applied. And what I'm going to do. With my brush, I'm going to start pulling these colours into each other. So you're going to be able to see them start to mix. Like so. And I'm going to go in and just put a little bit more copper on there. Because I did have quite a bit of gold on my brush. Oop. <laughs> it's patina chaos here, guys. <laughs> so I'm going back in with my copper. Oh, um, there we go. So what's happening, I hope you guys can see this, is that we're starting to get a transition of colour. So we've got Byzantine gold patina, copper patina and patina that's been spread. And you can see the difference in colours and this area here where they've been mixed, obviously it's a different shade, different colour. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, you open your posh dot patina, maybe you go for dark brown, it's a little bit too dark. How do you lighten it? It's oil based. What, what could you put in it? You can put in a lighter patina and get the perfect colour that you want, a colour that's really going to match your project with whatever you're doing. Now, you know, patina as a product is one thing. The application of a patina also um, affects the way it looks on a surface. So I've been doing a full coverage application on this, but on my woody bend, um, if I put some patina extending wax, got some patina on my brush, I could dry brush over these raised moldings, the raised details in the moldings, and it'll catch all of these details and really kind of elevate the depth of it. Or I could brush it full coverage wise ways into the depths of the mouldings instead and then further elevate the look of the raised grooves so honestly the effects you can achieve with patina are endless and it's something that we don't really talk about a lot and you know we wanted to spend today's education station really going through patinas what they look like what they do um because they really do add a finishing touch you know it is a tarnish it's a finish and it's a really really fantastic tool and they're so easy to use that that's the thing about posh shop it's all about you know accessible paints and accessible craft and they're all great for people to experiment with so i'm going to put my oil based patinas to one side now i will say guys if you have been using oil based patinas there's no point putting putting your brush in water because it's not going to get the oil out you need to thoroughly clean your brushes afterwards using soap um, just to get those oil and, and residue out of there, but as you would with oil painting. There you go. And I shall put them in water just for my assistant's sake because she likes to keep them damp before she washes them. Thank you, Arta Moose. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my aqua patinas, and what I want to show you is the difference in spreadability between the aqua and the uh, oil based so i'm taking the violet aqua patina one of my favorite ones look at how pigmented that color is and you'll notice immediately a difference in the consistency and texture of this look at the shine that that this this texture is kind of gooey i'd describe it as and then I hold it. Can you just open it for me? Yes, I can. My little TikTok star. There we go. Definitely got my TikToks, guys. So I'm going to open this and I'm going to open up the um, Byzantine gold as well because I feel like you'll be able to see the difference in consistency. 
You see the Byzantine here, this gold one, it looks kind of hard. If I put my finger in this, it's not going to go straight through. If I stick my finger in this, it goes straight in. <laughs> so there you go. And this is really creamy. It's a thicker consistency than Posh Shop Metallic Paste. Um, really pigmented and great for building up colour on your piece. So straight from my finger, <laughs> I'm just going to apply this to the next layer of Woody Bend. Yeah. So you can see, guys, how easy it is, or how easy it would be to really build up the colour here. I'm just going to take a baby wipe and wash my finger. While you're washing your finger, I'm going to say hello to some people. Hello, yes. bom, bom dia, Andrei. Buongiorno a voi, she says. Oh, buongiorno. Uh, we have Casimira saying, hola. Hola, guapa. <laughs> we have Michelle saying uh, her classic cuckoo or cuckoo boom, Michelle boom, uh, from rainy France. And we have Anna saying, hi, good morning. Pura vida. Pura vida. <laughs> Hola. Okay. So I'm going to go in and really build up this violet patina here. I want to get the true colours coming through for you guys. And maybe I'm going to have it transition into a deep blue. So I'm going to take the blue Prussian aqua patina here. Again, that shiny, liquidy consistency. Nice and gooey. And I'm going to apply this to this part of my molding. Like so. And then you're going to start mixing. And then I'm going to start just pulling together. I'm just moving my brush in a circle, guys. And the patinas are mixing together on their own. But actually, I want a bit more purple here. So I'm going to go back in with my purple and build it up. When you're doing painting and things like that, I really do describe it as a push and pull. You know, you can blend things together. But maybe you decide, I want it to be more brown, I want it to be more of this, I want it to be more of that, I want more highlights here. You push and you pull. Um, water really helps with mixing uh, water-based things together, which sounds like a, a genuine, you know, simple step, but it does really help. Uh, I've actually got here a spritzer. This just has plain water in it. You'll notice if I apply this to the aqua patina, it will immediately become more flexible, more spreadable, and easier to mix. So what I'm actually achieving here is a very smooth transition between this blue Prussian color here and the violet color. Now, I'll demonstrate this a little bit clearer with, let me think of a good color to pop on here. Green. Green, yeah. I'll grab my uh, primary green patina. Here we go, like so. <laughs> that, easy, that movement. Hello, <laughs> hello, Elfa and Helden from Frankfurt, Germany. Hello, Gabriela, who says, ciao, ragazze. Ciao, Gabriela, come stai? And we have Louis saying, hola, abraccio da Louis Rebello de Portugal. Oh, un abraccio a Portugal. <laughs> okay, so I've got my primary green in the middle here. Now watch, as I spray a little bit of water on here, just a teensy bit, using my same brush, I can literally just tickle it. I'm tickling it together and it's blending and mixing and smoothing to create this beautiful transition here. Now, if you ever see the artwork that Solly Jo creates, she absolutely adores using these kinds of metallic patinas because they just add something so much more than using metallic paste or pigments as themselves those products are fantastic but it's the patina that really gives Solly's work the edge and you can see here how beautiful and metallic this effect is and I'll hold this up look at the transitions the shine the movement and it really is so simple and easy to use. 
Hello, Joe, who says, all these colors are so yummy. I know. <laughs> don't, don't eat them, though. Don't eat them. No, 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 don't eat them. Um, and I'll even take a little bit of red here. Let's just put all the colors on so you can see what they look like. If I can open Do it. you need help? I got it. Whoa. I've got little baby wrists. <laughs> I've got red one. Now, I love using the red one for Halloween -y type projects. It's great for dry brushing. Um, I'm going to dry brush as well, you guys, so you can see what dry brushing looks like with patina uh, when it's raw. Actually, this patina, is it the aqua one? Yeah. Yeah, this one is an aqua one, that's fine. I mixed up my piles, you guys. <laughs> so I've got my uh, red medium cadmium patina, this one is. And I'm actually going to dry brush this over uh, this bit of my Would You Bend Mornings. You see when it's applied straight from the tin, the coverage is kind of chunky. Great for building up. And then I spray a little bit of water on this. And what I'm going to be able to do is brush this and just catch. I'm not putting any pressure on this, guys. I'm just running my brush over. And it's catching the highlights of this moulding. Let me see here. And that little bit of water has made this patina go a really long way. Now I'm having a lot of fun with this one, so I'm gonna keep going. We have Linda asking, do you have to seal aqua patina? No, so all of Poshop products are self-sealing. With the oil-based ones, you'll notice after you've used it, it feels kind of oily, I guess. Um, very smooth to touch. Uh, that takes around 30 days to cure, but once it's cured, um, it's going to keep its appearance, it's not going to move. Um, and it also gives you a bit more time to work with it. If you're using the oil one, the water one will dry quick, it seals quick, um, so great for a, a quick project, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're using the oil based, you might decide you come back to a project in a couple of days, want to build some more shadows up. Um, so that's a great option if you take a little bit longer to do uh, projects. We are also giving away today, you guys, a decoupage paper by Posh Talk, the Chat Noir. Now, I love using patina to actually place shadows on this decoupage to blend it in a little bit easier. Um, so if you want to win this decoupage, maybe experiment with it, try it. All you have to do is like, share and comment that you shared it. And we announce all the winners in our creations group. Also one of my favourite decoupages, very Halloween-y. <coughs> So, as I say, I'm going to keep building up purple in this corner. I really want a purple corner that transitions into a dark blue and then a green. There we go. So has anybody ever used patina before? Have you not used it because of um, something you wanted to know about it? Feel free to ask some questions. <laughs> We have Lynn saying hello. Hello, Lynn. We have Chrissy saying love the paper. I know, it's such a beautiful, beautiful decoupage paper, that one. And all of our decoupage is limited edition. So if you want it, it might be your last chance to get it. <laughs> and we have Debbie saying good morning from Rhode Island. Good morning, Debbie. Okay. So I'm just popping this patina in here. Like so. So you can see these three different colours. Now watch once again. I'll put some water. And I just run my brush like so. Now you see I'm pulling the purple in here. I'm now, because I want this green to transition this way with the movement, I'm just going to rump the excess off onto some paper towel um, just to get that excess off and not push too much purple in, you know, so we can keep this blue, bluey green. Louis says, awesome work, congratulations, a big hug from Portugal. Oh, Louis, you're so sweet, thank you. <laughs> 
And Chrissy says, perfect for Halloween decorations. Exactly. I think the colours, they're so out there that they are really great for Halloween, especially the aqua patinas. They're good for kids as well. Um, so I'm going to play a little bit more with the oil-based ones because I feel like we've spent too much time colouring in. <laughs> um, and actually, instead of showing you the colours I had before, these are aqua have... patinas as well. Oh, okay. These are aqua patinas as well. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, these are the Precious Collection by Posh Chalk. Um, so what I'm actually going to do, I've got three colours of this Precious Collection. Um, and I'm going to place this silver, royal silver colour. I'm going to dry brush this over what we've done here. Because patinas, they're buildable. You can build them up, spray them down. There we go. So I'm just taking a small flat brush that I've got here. So this is the patina you want me to open it up. That one. That makes. Ready? Go. There we go. And I'm just popping it in. And I'm going to dry brush this on my surface. Like so, and I'm just catching all the little lovely angels. Let the rest in. There we go. And because it's water based, I'm actually just going to grab a baby wipe and clean up these edges as well. So, baby wipes are water based. And give it a good old clean apart from where it's dried like here so when we say it's fast at sealing this is where it's sealed this is where i put it on fresh easy to wipe here is where it's sealed within a matter of minutes um you know so i could go over this with something else um because it's all nice and dry lynn is asking if we could showcase the silver oil based one yep so oil based one is this one open this up again you can see that kind of grainy consistency it's got going on in there Lynn it's kind of firm hard I'm gonna get my brush and just clean this one up for you here so if I get my brush in this you see it's as it's trying to come out here That's what it looks like on my brush. You see how it holds itself together, very strong, very crayony again. Um, out of the tin, if I apply it, this is a really beautiful choice if you're looking for some dry brushing. So I'm dry brushing, I've not got any extending wax on here. This is straight from the jar. And I am applying this over what we've previously done, this copper and the uh, Byzantine gold, because it's oil based and it's not gonna separate. There we go. We have Carrie asking, where can the papers be purchased in the USA? So it depends on your location. Uh, if you pop over to our website, type in your location and you will find your nearest stockist on there. We do have a lot of distributors of stockists in the US who I'm sure will be very happy to help you out. Um, but you can also win that paper if you like, share and comment. So where I've applied the silver, I'm just gonna hold it up so you can see what it looks like dry brushed. You see it's kind of grainy, really, really beautiful, vintage, chic effect. Once I go back in with my patina extending wax, the kind of coverage is less, more delicate. It really is all about the effect that you want to achieve, guys. I'd recommend if you're new to patinas, you're looking to explore here's with the wax here's without the wax just experiment honestly get a board and before you put it on your work 
give yourself a few different surfaces to practice with because you can apply patina to leather wood glass any literally anything because it will cure and it will stay on there so just practice see what makes you feel comfortable see what color transitions work for you what how you want to blend it um just to get a feel of how these work and and feel because they are different to paints and paste and you have to bear that in mind don't be intimidated by them just play just play around Right. So, and you see as I've dry brushed that silver on there, I've just caught the raised bits of this would you bend mold in. And then you can see the difference between the water based here and the oil based. Even though it's shiny, the oil based does appear a little bit duller. Again, really good for a distressed vintagey look, really ornate, classical, whereas the aqua patina dries quick also for building up depth and colour in water-based pieces so if you're using paint or paste with something like that again you can dry brush catch those mouldings catch whatever it is that you're doing or apply it as a full coverage thing to get a really beautiful deep build up of colour there we go so i think that might be all from me today Thank you for joining me for this education station. I hope it's been helpful and you guys know that if you do have any questions after an education station or before or that's something you want to see, you can just message us and we will make sure that we talk about everything and anything. Um, so you guys know how to use these products because the tools are there, it's just unlocking the potential of them. Um, so thank you so much for joining me and hopefully I'll see you soon. We'll be here, same place, same time every day of the week and I'll see you on Friday for a big project with Solly Joe. Take care everybody and also don't forget about a giveaway. Like, share and comment. <laughs> Bye!